Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please settle down. We are about to begin our program. I am Nandini Hoon, your MC this evening. First of all, as a mark, as a mark of respect to our distinguished panelists, may I request you all to put your mobiles on silent mode or switch them off. As it's the tradition at IFA events, we would first like to greet the dignitaries on with the flowers. As I announce your name, please rise and accept a bouquet from Ambassador Surendra Kumar, founding president of IFA. Ambassador Kanwal Sibul. <laughs> Koyamudur Uday Bhaskar. <laughs> Professor Shrikant Kondapali. Major General Dipankar Banerjee, <laughs> Professor H. S. Prabhakar. Not withstanding the pending boundary question, India has only for instance about China's increased involvement in South Asian countries or India's periphery. How far can these apparent contradictions be managed? These apparent contradictions will have to be managed very innovatively. Now specific to the India, Japan and United States, there is no doubt that any attempt at trying to have a closer relationship between these three countries, particularly in the security, strategic and I would say more specifically in the maritime domain, will cause a certain anxiety in China. We have seen this in the past, I think Professor Kondapalli had referred to it, you will recall that when there was reference to a multilateral naval exercise, which initially the Malabar was India-US, it grew slightly larger and they had brought in both Singapore and when Japan came on board, it caused an enormous amount of, I would say, concern in Beijing, so much so that. Uh, <clears throat> the most important uh, document that came out from the visit was the joint vision document. countries with regard to uh, Asia Pacific and uh, the Indian Ocean and that has some substance uh, in it because uh, it lays down uh, the parameters of uh, future strategic understandings <coughs> between India and the United States in the Western Pacific area. In other, way, in other words, the joint vision is uh, heavily oriented towards uh, uh, what might be called uh, China's eyes and the potential threat to China. But uh, there's nothing much about the Indian Ocean. And there's nothing at all about uh, the problems of India uh, to, the, to the west of our country. In fact, uh, our major problems are there. Yes, uh, China is a problem, China's eyes is an issue. But our major problem with China is not in the South China Sea or freedom of navigation there, etc., uh, etc. Et it's on the border. And on that, uh, the United States uh, doesn't take a position, and we are not inviting the United States to take a position. Either. So how do we balance these important strategic relationships that are arising in the world? And as a growing power of significance, how does India deal with the situations so that India, in its ultimate national objective, ensures the full safety and security of its citizens and a steady growth for the nation which will bring us to the fulfillment of our national objectives. In managing that, of course, you've highlighted the existing situations developing globally. You have a the rise of this China as an alternate power, third power, second power, and threatening to overcome that of the US power in a very short period of time. The Harvard School has referred to this as a Thucydides strap, referring to the Peloponnesian War in the pre-Christian era. Others have referred to the situation, comparing it to the 30 years war in the early 16th century. Uh, second is that there is a huge uh, factor of nationalism in China today. Uh, Arunachal Pradesh is treated as southern Tibet, and if Tibet is a core interest for China, southern Tibet as a part of Tibet is also a core interest for China, which means there is, as President Xi Jinping said in 2012, that core interests are more important than developmental interests. 
uh, indicating that there is a possibility here of asserting China's position. Uh, secondly, I would say that there is, uh, despite the assertion that there, is, there will be um, uh, improvement in relations between the two countries, we have seen that uh, there's not much uh, Chinese forthcoming attitude. For example, reinterpret the Constitution. When we say Constitution, it especially refers only to Article 9, which renounces war as an instrument of settling international disputes. And here, uh, you know, political leadership changes in every country. Uh -huh. Modi and Abe are not given to stay for all the time. Japan's survival, if he is threatened, Japan sees it is threatened, not just in the immediate neighborhood, even from the Strait of Burmos, where Japanese uh, energy products move all across into Pacific region to Japan. If there is any disturbance anywhere now, after Japan is said to see that as a threat to itself. And most important change that is going to come very soon, this uh, calendar year, is that uh, they are going to deploy the SDF overseas to protect Japanese interests. This thought has come specially since two Japanese nationals.